strange backsight is the most accurate and most efficient method for collecting multiple assets from one position. It offers total station-like abilities where you can get azimuth, inclination, and distance readings from one spot, and you can daisy chain them or, um, or use previous backsights. But uh, the biggest feature is that from one position, I can capture hundreds of assets um, with just one shot per point. Um, so let's take a look at how to set this up. This solution does require the most equipment, um, and so it looks a little bit different than the other two methods, but let's take a look at this. So we've got a adjustable height range pull. Um, due to the size of the true angle um, and the height that it adds, I would definitely select an adjustable height range pull or even a shorter one to allow you to actually view the uh, or look through the lens and the rangefinder. This is on uh, bipod legs to keep it stable. This is the only solution that requires it um, because it's got to be very steady in order to get those accurate readings. Um, so if you don't want to use bipods, you use something more stable like tripods, but you got to use at least one of those. Um, the reason I use this and not a typical tripod is just because it's lighter and more portable. Um, whereas if you've got one of the older you know, wooden tripod real survey deals, then um, you know that's a lot to lug around with you. So first, we're going to take the body of the true angle. So this is how it shows up, um, you know, in the box. It doesn't have any arms attached. We'll do that in just a second. But first, we have to attach this to our range pole. It's got the standard 5 8 thread at the bottom, and this bottom plate spins. That's what gives us our accurate readings, right? So this plate is intended to be stationary. Then when you spin the body, it gives you a different reading uh, in the display. So use this 5 8 thread go on top of the range pole, and I hold the body steady, and I spin the bottom plate until it's threaded all the way. Also be careful that you don't have an adjustable range pole that, uh, that has an inner tube that will spin easily because you can imagine if you start spinning this whole thing and that pole is spinning as well, then you get your, uh, your azimuth readings off. Okay, so we've got the triangle body mounted on top of the range pole. Now we need to add the two arms. So let's grab those. Now one looks different than the other. This one is meant to hold the arrow gold, the arrow gold antenna, um, centered directly above the rotation of the triangle. This one is just the other support arm. So if you're right-handed, um, put this on the left side of the true angle. You've got two feet here and then a thread in the middle. So line up those feet with these two inserts. Line that up and start threading in that screw. So we got one and then the same thing on the other side. So find those inserts. Put it in and screw that on. It doesn't have to be overly tight, it just does have to be snug. Now these will be a little loose until we get everything connected. Don't worry about that. We can either mount the arrow gold or the true pulse laser range finder. Let's do the laser range finder first just because that attaches to these two points and we'll hold everything together a little bit better. So there's two components. There's true pulse 200X and the bracket that it goes on. This is already mounted just by a simple brass fitting. And there's a, a quarter inch fitting at the bottom of this. So make sure these two deals that uh, come up on the sides are facing, or on the side closest to the lens, just like that. Line up the screw and thread that in again. Make sure it's nice and snug so this doesn't wiggle around. Now each one of these feet have a thread for these two screws. So make sure um, you have this lined up correctly. Lenses should be facing out. So if I'm looking at the true angle, I can read the true angle name, see on and off buttons, and uh, my lens should be right here so I can look through it. Line those up. Screw those in. And now this will be able to pivot. Now we'll be able to pivot that way, giving us true movement. Now we need to be able to have the true angle and the true pulse talk to each other. Um, and that is via a cable that's provided with the kit. It's a little four pin 
cable. One end goes to the front, the 200X there. The other goes into the laser port of the triangle. So I like to do the True Pulse 200X first. Now these ports, there's only one way that these can go in. So kind of put it in and rotate it till you feel it lock, and then start threading it in. If it's really hard to thread in, don't force it. Uh, pull it out and try to reseat it again. So that's tight. And I'm going to thread this through here and to the other side where it says laser. Now there's two ports that are exactly the same. One is labeled data, one's labeled laser. You hook it up to the data side, nothing will happen. That's for that's data output. We're looking for um, data input from the laser. Okay, same thing, make sure it's seated nicely and then make sure it's snug. Now for cable management, um, I like to route it through here and then you can take some of the excess and just push it into the little cable carrier on the side. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then lower it maybe a little bit so you give away your hand. Now I can use this freely. Okay, so we have a laser range finder mounted to the triangle, triangle mounted to the range pole. Now we need to get the arrow gold mounted. So first we're going to start with the antenna. Just standard arrow gold antenna with the rubber bumper. And this threads on the 5 8 inch thread up top. Go until it hits bottom. There we go. Now we need the receiver. Arrow gold receiver with the pole bracket. This pole bracket um, clicks into this mechanism, which is basically the same mechanism that's on a, uh, a pole clamp. So you press in this button, and there's a hole up top. Put the pin in there, wait for it to click, and let go. All right, last component we need is the antenna cable going from the arrow gold to the antenna. Now I have a longer antenna cable, so we're gonna have to wrap it around uh, just so it's not hanging everywhere. But I would definitely recommend a shorter one to make this easier. So first, let's hook this up to the antenna. Just as you would with normal arrow gold setup. Then this end will go to the arrow gold. But first, let's get rid of some of the slack. I'm just going to wrap it right around here. Again, I'd recommend a shorter cable, make it a little easier. Make sure these connections are nice and snug. Don't over tighten them, but make sure that if you wiggle right here, that brass fitting won't move. Same on the antenna. Okay. So now we've got our full range of backside setup, except for the last thing, which is our tablet mount. So whether you're using a phone or a tablet, I definitely recommend some kind of RAM mount um, that will flip to this pole. And then a little tip is to place it so it faces the side that your range pole uh, or your bipod legs stick out. Um, that's where you want to be standing most of the time. In case of wind, you've got control here, um, and all the weight from the iPad is going to be on the um, supported side. If you got any other side, it may tip over, especially in the wind. All right, so that is a full setup for the range backside. Now, let's go through the initialization procedure. So obviously the first step, let's turn on our receiver, press and hold the on button until the red light comes on and then we'll just let the arrow go track as we set everything else up. Next thing we need to do is we need to configure the True Pulse 200X correctly. Uh, two settings we need to be aware of. First is gonna be Bluetooth. Um, there's three settings for that. It's off, on, and encoder. Because we're using a true angle, which is an encoder, we need to set it to encoder mode. So to do that, look through the lens, tap the fire button, see that it's turned on, and see the red crosshairs, and click the mode button until you see BT, and then switch it 
does it twice, leave off to get to encoder, which is ENC. Once you see ENC, tap fire, that locks it in. Next thing we need to set is the units. Uh, most people in the US have a tendency to set it to feet um, and degrees, but for this solution, EOS Tools Pro is going to be expecting measurements from the true pulse in meters. So again, hit the mode button, click through to see units, choose the second option, and then scroll through until you see meters, centimeters, and degrees. Press fire button to lock it in. Um, and then the last kind of setting, I guess you could call it, is what you want to see in the when you look through the uh, viewfinder. There's a few different options. You can uh, have it display horizontal distance, slope distance, inclination, um, or vertical distance. I prefer to do horizontal distance um, or slope distance because that gives you the closest reading to what you expect of how, some, how far something is away. And why I want to see that is because if I'm shooting to the top of a tree where there's just bare sky behind it, then I want to know if I've missed. And if I shoot something um, you know, way far away, it gives me a, a crazy far reading, where I think the tree's 60 feet away and it turns something that's like a thousand feet, then I know something's wrong and I need to reshoot it. So it's great to have it in that, that mode. So I'm going to set mine to slope distance. Okay, next thing is we need to set up our true angle. So every time that we turn on our true angle, which you do by just pressing the on button, you'll see it IND, which means index. So we need to calibrate this true angle so that it gives us accurate azimuth readings. So when it says IND, rotate this 360 degrees until the zeros are flashing. Now what it's doing is asking you to set it at zero. Um, now we don't care, we just want to set it anywhere. So I'm just going to press the on that locks it in at zero. And now it's going to give me readings all in reference to zero, which is about that way where I set it now. Um, the reason it doesn't matter is because when you go to set up a range range backside shot, you are going to set up two RTK shots, one being a backside, one being your control point, and then um, it's going to figure out the angle from north where you're at, and it will automatically adjust the readings for the triangle to light up with north. 